okay? When we say good or bad, good that is not 100%, that hasn't got 100% oral. Okay, oral is good, pure good. That is 24 karat good, which is 99.99999. In a world where the allure of gold has captivated civilizations for millennia, one man promised to turn this ancient desire into a modern fortune. Nana Pia Mensa, known as Nam One, stood at the helm of Men's Gold Ghana Limited, a gold dealership that glittered with the promise of wealth and prosperity. His staggering 10% monthly return on investments was not just a dream, it was a guarantee. Or so it seemed. But behind the glitz and glamour, lay a web of deception, so intricate it would unravel to become one of Ghana's most notorious financial scandals. From the rise of a golden empire to a fall that left thousands in despair, this is a tale of ambition, betrayal and a relentless pursuit of justice. Join me as we unmask Nam One and explore the rise and fall of Ghana's most notorious scammer, a story that's still unfolding, a mystery that's far from solved. I'm Alfie, and you're watching TWS TV. Every empire has its beginnings, and for Nam one. It was a dream forged in the heart of Ghana. Born on May 16, 1984, Nana Piamensa's early life was a blend of ambition and vision. But it was gold, that timeless symbol of wealth, that would become his calling. Men's Gold Ghana Limited was not just a business, it was a phenomenon. Established as a gold dealership and investment firm, it promised something extraordinary. A 10% monthly return on investments a golden opportunity, quite literally. The allure was irresistible. From everyday individuals to high-profile celebrities, the men's gold promise drew people from all walks of life. Nam One's charisma and confidence were magnetic and the company's success seemed unstoppable. But success often invites scrutiny. As men's gold's fame spread, so did the whispers of doubt. Financial experts began to question the sustainability of such high returns. Was this golden promise too good to be true? The stage was set, the players were in place and the world was watching. But beneath the surface, cracks were beginning to appear. The men's gold saga was about to take a turn, one that would shake the very foundations of trust and belief. The promise of gold has lured adventurers and dreamers for centuries, but in the modern world of finance, it was Nam One's men's gold that turned this age-old allure into a tangible opportunity. A 10% monthly return was not just a promise, it was a golden ticket to prosperity. Thousands flocked to men's gold, entrusting their savings, their hopes, and their dreams to a company that seemed to defy the ordinary. Success stories were shared, and the men's gold family grew united by a belief in something extraordinary. The once gleaming empire of men's gold had crumbled. Offices were closed, promises were broken, and dreams were shattered. The golden illusion had faded, leaving behind a trail of despair and betrayal. Nam One, the charismatic leader who had once stood tall, was now facing the full force of the law. Charges were filed, legal battles ensued, and the man who had promised so much was now fighting for his own future. The Coalition for Aggrieved Customers of Men's Gold was no longer a silent group of victims, they were a force demanding justice. Protests were organized, voices were raised, and the call for Nam One's arrest grew louder. But this was not just a story of legal battles and financial loss, it was a human tragedy. Families were torn apart, lives were ruined, and the trust in a system that had, had allowed such a scam to flourish was eroded. The men's gold saga had become a symbol of a deeper problem, 
a warning of the dangers of unchecked ambition and unregulated promises. The golden dream had turned into a cautionary tale, a lesson in trust and accountability. As the legal battles continued and the fight for justice raged on, the world was left to reflect on a story that had captivated a nation. The rise and fall of men's gold was a tale of our times, a reminder of the fragility of dreams and the importance of vigilance. The storm had passed, but the wreckage remained. The collapse of men's gold was not just a moment in time, it was a scar on the financial landscape of Ghana. The legal battles were far from over, and the fight for justice was still very much alive. Namwan's legal troubles were complex and multifaceted. Appeals were made, warrants were issued, and the legal system was grappling with a case that had captured the nation's attention. A man who had once promised gold was now seeking a way out of a legal maze. But the real story was not in the courtroom, it was in the homes and the hearts of those who had been affected. The aggrieved customers of men's gold were still seeking answers, still fighting for their rights, still bearing the broken burden of promises. The broader impact on Ghana's financial landscape was profound. Trust in investment schemes were shaken, regulations were scrutinized, and the lessons of men's gold were being studied and debated. The men's gold saga was not just a story of one company's rise and fall, it was a reflection of a society grappling with trust, accountability, and the delicate balance between risk and reward. The golden dream had faded, but the lessons remained etched in the memories of those who had lived it. Just when it seemed the men's gold saga had reached its conclusion, a new twist emerged from the shadows. Payboy, a company set up by Namwan, promised to settle men's gold customers. But this was no resolution. It was a fraud within a fraud. The scheme was audacious and deceptive. Customers were asked to register or verify their do documents and purchase a card costing 650 CDs before they would be paid. It was a Ponzi scheme wrapped in a Ponzi scheme, a betrayal compounded. The Economic and Organized Crime Office, EOCO, in Ghana exposed Payboy as a scam. It had no license, no authority, and no intention of paying men's gold customers. It was a cruel twist in a story already marred by deception and loss. The aggrieved customers of men's gold were once again caught in a web of lies. Their trust abused. Their hopes dashed. The Payboy scheme was a stark reminder of the audacity of fraud and the vulnerability of those seeking justice. The Payboy saga was not just a footnote in the men's gold story, it was a symbol of a deeper problem, a warning of the persistence of fraud and a call to action for vigilance, regulation and empathy. The story of men's gold, Namwan and Payboy is a tale of our times, a reflection of the complexities of trust, greed, and the human condition. The golden dream may have faded, but the lessons remain etched in the memories of those who lived it and those who continue to seek justice. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. If you have, like, comment, subscribe on my video and share it with your friends. Let's keep the discussion going. I'm Alfie and I'm out.